I make life hard for other people. <laughs> That's not true, is it? That's a core belief that I grew up thinking about myself. And the reason is because my mom got pregnant out of wedlock and she was told, don't have me, I should um, be given up for adoption. She had to go for to a home for unwed mothers. She was also schizophrenic, so I grew up in a lot of foster homes. So I grew up believing that I cause problems for other people. Our core beliefs don't just affect who we were and how we grew up, but our core beliefs, such as I cause problems for other people, affect our days, daily lives. It affects my life in my marriage, in my day-to-day -day home. I even apologize to my dog for causing her problems. I apologize to my husband repeatedly the other day for having to take me to emergency because I cracked my ribs and I had to go to the doctor. And I felt so bad because I felt like I was putting him out but I had to go to emergency. So that's just an example of how core beliefs can really negatively affect your life and how you treat other people. So this morning, I learned seven things about this core belief that I cause problems for other people and it really has changed my perspective on myself and other people. And I have a feeling this is going to be a life-changing thing. It's not just a one-time thing. So I'm going to share those seven things with you. The first thing I realized is that what other people's problems are, are their business. It's not my business. Byron Katie says there's three types of business. God's business, your business, and other people's business. And if you get involved in other people's business and God's business, then you're not paying attention to your own business. And your own business is the only business that you can control or that you have any power or effect over. Stay in your own business. When I think, okay, I'm causing problems for other people, I'm actually getting involved in their business. If I'm planning my husband's day for him and re-figuring out how he's gonna get to work and when he's gonna get to work and what he's gonna do because he has to take me to emergency instead of going right to work, that I'm not in my business. My business is I've got cracked ribs, I'm gonna die if I don't get help, and I need you to take me to emergency. That's my business. His business is what he has to take care of later that day. The second thing I realized is that I did not set out to deliberately cause problems for anybody. I didn't cause problems for my mom on purpose. I didn't cause myself to be born. Whatever uh, problem that I have or that I may be causing for other people is not something that I'm doing on purpose to hurt them. It's a natural outflow of my life that this person happens to be sharing. The third tip is knowing and allowing people to choose how they're going to respond to me. So me not dictating their response, but knowing that people make choices. For my mom, she chose to keep me, she chose to raise me, and it was really hard for her. Like she was hospitalized because of the schizophrenia, she had nervous breakdowns, she had to be visiting me in foster homes. It was painful for everybody. She took care of her business her way, and I have to allow that. I have to allow her the freedom to make her choice. The fourth thing I realized is that I may have been assuming I'm creating problems for people, but I'm actually just creating situations for people. And the definition matters because a problem is a difficulty. Inherently, it's um, hard to get over. It may not even be solvable. It takes a lot of energy or time or money or resources to figure out. But what if I'm not actually creating problems. What if my existence, being born or having to go to emergency, is just creating a situation that a person has to deal with? So instead of thinking of it as a problem that I'm creating problems for people, I think it might be better for me and healthier to think of it as a situation or just something that I'm allowing another person to experience and be part of. The fifth thing flows right from that, and that's that my existence has an effect on other people. And that's the whole point of existing. That's why God created us, to have an effect on the world and people and dogs and the environment. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be 
affecting the people. If we were just here not creating problems or situations or events for people to participate in or even have to help solve, then we might as well not exist. And I want to exist. My existence is just supposed to be affecting other people. No matter where I lived or what I was doing or what choices I make, I will always have an effect on people. And that's not just okay, that's what I'm here for. The sixth thing I realized is I want to live. I want to be alive. I want to do things that make me crack my ribs, which had to do with my camper van when I took out my camper van last time. I want to exist. I want to be conceived and cause problems for my mom. I want to go and have adventures and have dogs and then regret having dogs because then you can't leave them alone and then getting more dogs because one wasn't enough. Seventh and final thing I realized this morning was that I can't control the outcome of the problems or situations that I cause. So I could never in a million years control whether or not it's a good day or a bad day for Bruce, my husband, not to go to work because he had to take me to emergency. I could never control the outcome of my mom not giving me up for adoption. We don't know what the outcome of the supposed problem or the situation or whatever effect we're having on the world, we don't know what the outcome is of that. So we can't even assume that it's a problem or that it's positive or negative. It could be a blessing. Who knows? It really is none of my business how my existence affects other people. My business is to stay grounded, healthy, centered, whole, present, listening and sensitive to the spirit. What feels like the next right thing to do or say in this moment and then go forward from there. The rest of it, whether it causes a problem or a beautiful blessing, so be it. I don't know if you feel like you cause problems in people's lives and I don't know if this has helped you at all. But I do know that when I sat down and I worked it through and I really challenged my beliefs about am I really causing a problem in people's lives, it changed how I see myself. So I encourage you to do the same. Think about uh, the, your thoughts that you have, the core beliefs that you have about yourself, and just sit with them. Question it. Is that really true? Do I really cause problem in other people's lives? Give yourself time to reflect on it and to pray about it and to let the answer come from within you. Because you know what? It could actually change your life and make you feel so much better. Take good care of yourself because you are worth taking good care of. Even if you cause problems sometimes. Mwah. I make life hard for other people. <laughs> it's not true, is it?